So yeah. now we're going to do the more traditional transforaminal approach, which would be useful for either foraminal pathology or getting into the canal. A lot of the targeting uh, is similar and drawing of the lines is similar to what Meng was showing. I'll kind of review that briefly. So the things that I like to, to draw, and we'll just use Meng's lines, but we use x-ray for this in general, would be the midline, which we've marked already right here. Um, so that's the midline. And then the, the top of the vertebral body. So we're going to do the three, four level of, uh, again. So this would be the cranial aspect of the L4 uh, vertebral body, the end plate. So let me just make sure I know what line this is. So X right here. All right. So like that's this line right here. And then I like to mark the ipsilateral pedicle uh, because that gives me a landmark uh, to aim for. So X right here, please. So I just put a little circle here. Our marker's not working great anymore, but we'll know that it's there. And then uh, Meng's already drawn this diagonal line. You know, the, the angle that you depends on where you're trying to get, but a slightly uh, cranial to caudal angle can be beneficial. And so we have this diagonal line here. X right here for me. Something like that would be nice for approaching. Um, thanks, guys. I'll give you that. So we'll draw this line here. Beautiful. So just to review, we have our midline here. We have the cranial aspect of L4. We had our pedicle here, and that's the trajectory. Now, Meng started uh, like six or eight uh, centimeters lateral to the midline. We're going to start further lateral to get a little bit more medial. So can I have the ruler? Again, I would plan all of this stuff based on my preoperative MRI on the axial cuts, but uh, we don't have the luxury here. So let's just make something up and see what happens. So we're going to say he started like, I don't know, eight. I'll start 11. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take uh, the spinal needle. Oh, yeah, I'll take the spinal needle. And what I, I'm similar to Meng. I like to um, kind of chicken out on purpose a little bit and land on the side of the SAP. So let's do that. So I'm going to put this down. I don't feel bone yet. Let's see where we're at. X-ray. Getting close. And shot here. Now, I'm probably dorsal. I don't actually know how big this cadaver is. X-ray there. Let's take a lateral just to make sure. We might need to table up. Now, in any patient that has a really small foramen um, or I'm nervous about the location of the exiting nerve root, I'll actually do more of a shallow docking technique. OK, so we're. Uh, that's fine. Um, I can see that I'm dorsal. So keep the table where it's at. Come back to an AP. Um, but for any patients with a big foramen, soft foraminal disc, something like that, this, this approach works um, really nicely. So basically, I just need to be a little bit deeper. All right, that feels like bone x-ray there. All right, so I'm probably on the side of the facet. Now what I'm going to try to do is sneak under the facet and hit the back of the L4 vertebral body x-ray. Um, can I have the lateral view? So I can feel that I'm on bone there. You want to be all the way in the uh, caudal aspect at the base of the foramen to be as far as possible from that exiting nerve root. And I like to dock on bone, not on disc. Beautiful. So that's where you want to be. So um, come back to an AP. I actually, um, it's interesting, we all have different techniques. Meng likes to do a lot of this on the lateral. I like to make all my changes on the AP um, because my fear is being too far medially and in the canal. And the only way I ever know that is on the AP x-ray if I've crossed that medial particular line. So we'll make an incision here. It only has to be about seven millimeters or so through skin. And then I'll take the guide wire. And do that. Careful, sharp. Needle comes out. I like to do the sequential dilators. There is an all-in-one dilator, but because you can't cut through the fascia, I want as little pressure downward as possible uh, because I don't want to lose my spot that I worked so hard to get. So the initial dilator goes down. Let's make sure we're in the right spot. X-ray. Yeah, and see, it, it migrated a little bit um, medial, but that's OK. Um, I'm OK with the blunt dilators going. So um, I'll take the pusher. Obviously, I wouldn't want my needle that far. I wouldn't want a reamer that far. But these blunt dilators are safe, and um, likely that's just ventral to everything. So I'm just going to sequentially dilate up. And then just for the purposes of demonstration, why don't we ream with the biggest reamer? 
I actually very rarely ream. I worry about reaming without you know, taking bone, putting in sharp objects without direct visualization, but reaming can be helpful for exposing your bony arch and, and landmarks. And so actually, I counterintuitively, I only ream when it's a massive foramen because I'm trying to take away the um, soft tissue and show myself the, uh, the arch. So x-ray here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my hand a little bit, and I'm, we're going to ream just gently. X-ray here. And really, I'm not taking away bone. I'm just taking soft tissue off the arch. X-ray. And then you don't want to go past the medial pedicular line. So that's good there. Now, obviously, if it was a tight foramen or something like that, I would not be reaming. In fact, I'd be shallow docking. Contrary to, to how Meng does it, I actually like to have the bevel down when I place it so it, it slides underneath the neural element and fits right against the disc space. But it's just surgeon preference. So we're going to put that down. And x-ray there. Nice. And then lateral x-ray, just to confirm. What we want to see on the lateral x-ray is that we're posterior to the posterior vertebral line. Good. So you see, we're exactly where we want to be. So you can come up and out with x-ray. You know, we're, we haven't reamed into the vertebral body. We are not in the disc space. And we're as far as we can possibly be from the exiting nerve root. Can we go table down, please, to Derman height? <laughs> that means really low. That's good. Thank you. So we'll put our scope in. Let's see. Can I have the... Oh, there's something on the... Let me just clean my lens here. Peter, I noticed you have your bevel facing down. Correct. So here's what I, I like to do. So bevel's down, so I'm circumferentially protected right now. So I'll take the cautery. And so I just like to first clear off the base of my field because otherwise all this stuff just kind of balloons up and obscures your visualization. And, and right now with the bevel down, I know I'm flush against the disc space. There's, there's really not much here that can be injured. Can I have the grasper, please? So we'll just kind of clear out. What we're looking at right now is the back of the disc space at the frame. And, um, and then once I've cleared out that base, then I start to rotate up and around that arch. So I'll rotate up and around. And what you're going to start to see is um, you know, the arch of Wagner coming up. So I'll take the cautery. And I'll show you those landmarks. Can I get a little bit more slack on my cords there? So we, this is the, the disc that we exposed. And then if you work up and around, here you see the back of the vertebral body. Here's the pedicle coming up. And this is the cranial aspect of the L4 pedicle. And then this is the SAP, the superior articular process of L4 in the foramen. And I expose these landmarks on every single case that I do transforaminal, regardless of whether the pathology is in the canal or in the lateral, re uh, in the lateral recess, in the foramen or far lateral. Can I have the grasper, please? Hi, and that's Peter. because- Peter, This is absolutely beautiful. So thank you. Can you uh, point out for the, you know, uh, you know, viewers right now, left as a caudal and rostral, but also, you know, you can see the yellow ligament attachment, really beautiful. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so, point that out, please? Yeah, so um, cranial is to the right, so over here, and you can actually see that little bit of fat over there. The exiting nerve root's going to be kind of up in that area, so that's where, you know, it's kind of tiger country, so you want to stay away from that area or, or put a li as little pressure there as possible. Um, caudal is of here, so this is the, the pedicle of L4, the top of the pedicle, um, and then you can start to see here, can I have that cautery again? This is just some, some disc material in the foramen. I'm just going to clear that out here. You know, if we had a foraminal disc herniation, this would be it. I mean, I might be done with my case right now. Um, you know, you might spend 10 minutes doing the case and then 45 minutes making sure you were done, but that's okay. So let me show you that, um, <laughs> that ligamentum flavum. I'm just shrinking down this disc material here that's in the foramen. And then this is a really nice picture, it's not as yellow in a cadaver, but this material just dorsal to my probe right here is ligamentum flavum right here. So actually from a transforaminal approach, especially if you take a pretty far lateral starting point, you can do a decent lateral recess decompression. So let's take the drill actually. 
So I don't always drill, but um, it certainly can help if, if you need to do a foraminoplasty, uh, either because of foraminal stenosis or because um, you need to get into the canal. So what we're drilling here is really the, non, the non-articular undersurface of the SAP. And there's nice biomechanical studies that show that you can really have a substantial foraminal expansion while destabilizing the patient zero because you're not touching the, the joint surface itself. So again, I'm just drilling out the undersurface of the SAP, a little bit of the cranial aspect of the L4 pedicle, which is over here on the left. And then uh, I'm just gonna show you, we can get, we can get into the canal and, uh, and then I'll hand it over. We'll do another approach. So this is my drilling. Can I have the probe again? And we can advance a little further. And can you push back in with x-ray real quick? So I like to show myself these landmarks because if I'm underneath this SAP, I know I'm in the foramen, right? You don't need to take a bunch of x-rays. If I'm lateral to it, I'm far lateral. And then if I'm medial to it, I'm in the canal. So all this area over here is in the canal. So if you had a paracentral or central disc herniation, you could very easily get in there. Let's just take an x-ray. I've looped around the, uh, the pedicle here, x-ray there. And so you can confirm you are exactly where you, where you need to be. And if we had a little bit more time, we could advance uh, into that region there uh, and get into the canal itself. So that's, the, that's that epidural fat right there in the ventral epidural space. All right, well, in the interest of time, I think we'll hand it off to the next approach here. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys.